Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Vivian and I am a full-time data scientist living and working in Sydney, Australia. Um, a lot of the time working as a data scientist, we are tasked to build a model or sometimes even propose a project plan. So today's video is going to be an overview of the key components of any data science modeling project. And before we get started, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more videos on data science. Let's get straight into it. So data science is pretty much the intersection of statistics, computer science, and the business world. So in simple terms, we work with a lot of data, we play around with it to find patterns in it, and then we collaborate with different teams to see how we can use these insights to drive value for the business. So our day-to-day -day job can be broken down into six or seven main phases, collectively known as the data science life cycle. So obviously different companies and different teams will have different naming conventions, but the crux of it remains the same. So the first step is to always understand the business problem and initiate project planning. Now, no matter which company you work for, or even if you are freelancing, there will always be a business problem to solve. So here you want to focus on the requirements from a business perspective. So really just put yourself in your CEO's shoes and think about what he wants to accomplish and then turn this into a data science problem. So for example, your business problem could be how can I increase revenue for my business? And your corresponding data science problem would be how do I best identify and target the customers who are most likely going to transact? Hopefully that makes some sense. So next, project planning begins, generally involving the teams coming together and drawing out a project plan, setting timelines, prioritizing what needs to be done and what team is responsible. There may also need to be regular meetings with the key stakeholders um, where the project manager might circulate a status update. So for example, are there any significant delays and which teams are holding it up? Um, so this might seem trivial and a bit of a time waster and it's just something that I definitely felt when I was first writing all these project status updates and spending countless hours of my day doing so. But in retrospect, I think it is actually super critical to ensure the timeliness and the success of any project. Now your second step is to figure out what data exists and what exactly you need to solve your business problem. So as I said earlier, our job as a data scientist is to turn data into actionable insights. So data extraction is a very key part of our day-to-day -day job. Um, now, depending on where you work, a lot of the data might actually already exist. Um, possibly you have data engineers who are building up an ETL process to save the data into a warehouse somewhere. Um, but if the company that you're working at is relatively less established or the function is yet to be set up, or maybe the data you want just simply does not exist yet. Um, it is up to yourself to go source this data. Now, possibly this could be weather data or census data, but you might need to go scrape the web or work with some third party vendors to purchase external data. Now, once we have our initial data sets ready, we now move into data exploration. So you might often hear this as EDA, which stands for exploratory data analysis. Um, so this is where we look at characteristics of the data and see if we can identify any trends. Um, we also investigate data quality here. So for example, do we have enough data over a certain period of time? Are there missing values? And if so, how can we cater for these missing values? Um, this area is also where you might want to play around with the data, get as creative as you want, and see if you can find any interesting trends that you could possibly share with your business as a quick win. So in terms of what programs we use for data extraction, um, I'm personally the most comfortable with using SQL, and I think it's also the most common one across different businesses, but I've also seen teams use either SAS, Python, or R for the data extraction. But really, it just depends on you and your business's preferences. Now, once we've gathered all the data and verified the quality, it is time to move into the third step, which is data preparation. So here is where we start constructing the final data set that we are going to use for modeling. So generally you want to use data over a long period of time to ensure there is no seasonality present. So for example, if we are looking at transactions made by our customers, then obviously you would expect it to peak in either June or November, December, given end of financial year and the whole Black Friday and Christmas sales. 
So this is also where we can get creative and create new variables. I like to call these new flavors. So for example, you might wanna look at transactions over different time periods. So it could be over the last three months, the last one year, or maybe even the last seven days. So create as many of these as you want, see which ones are more predictive in the model, um, just ensure that your naming conventions are consistent and you're formatting all your variables correctly. So once we have our final modeling data set ready, it is now time to build the model. So every model that we build will need to predict an outcome. Now it can either be binary, which is like zero or one, or predict a number, depending on whether we are building a classification or a regression model. So here you might split your data up into a training set and also a testing set. You will then select your modeling technique and test out the top features of your model. Parameter tuning can also be used here to make your model as predictive as possible. Um, once you have a draft version of your model ready, you want to then apply it onto your testing set to see how it performs. And common terms you might hear thrown around would be like accuracy, genie, precision, and recall. Now, I just want to make a quick note that many people think that data scientists only build models, but modeling is in fact a very small portion of our day-to-day -day job. And there is also no need for a super complex model. Um, sometimes a simple intuitive model can perform equally well as a really, really complex one. The key here is to never lose sight of your business problem and what you are trying to solve. So now that we have our model finalized, it is time to implement this model. So personally, I work pretty close with the product and engineering teams to do this deployment, but I've also worked in other teams in previous roles where our job basically ends at the model build where we basically give our model file to a separate team for them to do all the implementation and the deployment. And once our model is implemented, it also needs to be monitored. So make sure you have model monitoring reports set up or at least a quarterly or annual model performance review to ensure that your outputs are what you expect and that your results and key metrics are stable over time. So yes, now we might have a model that is actually running in production every day, but so what? It is how this model is being used in day-to-day -day processes that is key. So for example, your model can be used to automate some real-time decisioning processes across the company and approve a certain number of applications. Remember, there is no point in having a model built if it's not being adopted by the rest of your business. It is all about creating value and driving a better customer experience. So make sure you keep that in mind and please don't ever lose sight of it. And obviously there is not always going to be a model to build. A good model can run happily for almost two or three years in production without the need to be refreshed. Um, feel free to check out this video up here on basically everything that I do as a data scientist in my day-to-day -day job whenever I'm not building models. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap up my video here. I hope this video has helped some of you out there or given you a clearer picture on how the data science lifecycle actually works. I hope I haven't just been rambling for the past 10 minutes. Um, as always, if there are any topics that you would like to see me cover, please drop them down in the comments below. If this video has helped you, please consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, take care and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.